right, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Battle of Central Europe Qualifier Round 3. And I'll be your host, Don Horatio, here for Hefla TV. And I will be the man bringing you the English content for the next couple of days of this, uh, at least today, tomorrow, and the day after that, for the Battle of Central Europe. going to be a very nice tournament. This is the last round of the qualifiers. There were eight teams invited to the main event, and then eight teams will qualify from this stage. And the eight invited teams, there's some pretty big names there. Uh, Sedinolis, Vul Assassins, Goomba... My Insanity, the names that really spring to mind, so lots of good teams already in, and then, well, there's also this qualifier round, and I do believe, unless I'm very confused, that the winner of this best of three series will make it into the main tournament to play up against the big boys, so lots riding on this series here. It will be a best of three between Central of Fear, who are starting on the dire side with the first pick, and XD, who will be Radiant and second pick, so let's just jump into the bands and picks here. Right off the bat, we've got Lycan taken out. Yeah. Along with the Doombringer by Central of Fear, and X and D will take Radiant out the Bat Rider and Trian. So no surprises in the band so far. Murata first pick for COF, and XD reply with the Invoker. So a nice strong first pick for them in the uh, in the first page, first stage here. They might go for the Shadow Demon to deny it to the Murata. Add uh, add that onto the Sunstrike. Uh, sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Synergy. There we go. Sunstrike synergy with the Invoker Soulcatcher after a Soulcatcher disruption into a Sunstrike is. And a ton of damage, and denying that pick to the Murana would be pretty nice as well. But, well, they will do the Shadow Demon. Okay, so that makes a bit, good bit of sense. And, yeah, you really can't leave that open to Central Fear to take, really. They might go for a Bane, potentially. It's the most obvious Murana pick. Uh, sorry, a synergetic, synergistic pick. And if it's not picked right now by COF, I reckon X and D will ban it. But maybe COF's okay with that. But they'll go ahead and grab the Bane. So, no surprises so far. A very typical draft, and, well... I don't really know a whole lot about these teams, and I'm not sure they know a whole lot about each other either, to be perfectly honest. Uh, there were 64 teams in this qualifier, and that's just a lot to really think about, so it's hard to really do any advanced research. Maybe they... I don't Ten think their games were broadcasted three. before uh, in the best of one stages, so I'm not sure how much these teams have seen of each other. So far, it's a very typical ban phase, except for maybe that Weaver that was just banned out by COF after the Chen. And X and D, they take out a Brewmaster, one more ban here than a pick, so... The Brewmaster are pretty good with the Murana. I mean, you can just kind of fight relentlessly, take a lot of really nice fights, and just kind of roll over in the mid-game, potentially. But they just go ahead and take that out, so nothing to worry about there. Brewmaster are one of the most popular heroes, at least relatively, in this current patch. And, well, they got that last ban, like I said, and... I don't know. I guess Murana, you may want to ban another strong tri-lane here. Maybe an Ancient Apparition would be a good ban, because then COF could go with the Murana Bane, Ancient Apparition tri-lane, and that's just... Kill is waiting to happen with a Chilling Touch and then the Bane set up for the arrow. So that's one thing to think about. Or they can maybe try and ban on some cores. There's still a lot of decent carries left. Naga Siren's still in the pool, for one. Ember Spirit is much maligned, but still a decent pick in some situations. So he could make his way in here. Oh, there's still quite a bit left. It's hard to really say what these teams want to ban. They just kind of have a core and a support so far. So the, the world is their oyster so far. And this next couple of picks will help settle out the... Uh, the tempo of this draft, if you will, at least in suggesting which style each team might go for. Next to D, I mean, this is the time when you really think through your picks, because this ban and pick in a row is probably the most crucial point in the draft for a Radiant team. So they're spending their bonus time doing it, knowing that when they ban, they'll pick almost immediately after that and lose not a whole lot of time. So it's okay to spend it now. They'll take out the Tidehunter, big team fight Radiant hero, team and go for a Centaur Warrunner themselves. So they ban a strong offlaner and pick one of their own. Pick. And, well, this is a combination... Almost that we saw, um, what's their name? Uh, DK, oh my god, there we go. Run at Star Ladder with the Centaur Warrior Invoker combination. And for the most part, I mean, the hoof stop mana increase is one thing, but once you actually get going on that hero, this combination is just as strong as it used to be with a stomp double edge into Sunstrike. And they also have a Shadow Demon on top of that with Soul Catcher. Their pickoff potential is already massive, assuming it's a Quas Exhort Invoker, which. Typically, it is. We do see some Quas Wex, but depending on the rest of the picks, it could shake out either way for the Invoker, but it's just so hard to pass up on that pickoff potential Reserve with the Sunstrike time. and the disruption into sort of Blink Stomp double edge combination. And Central of Fear, well, they need some. A little bit more killing potential would be nice because they do have the Shadow Demon on X and D, so if there's a arrow, sorry, if there's a uh, Nightmare Arrow combination, Shadow Demon can go for the disruption Radiant and try to save someone, but they go for pick. more follow up on the Bane setup, a Lashrak stun. Following up on the Bane could be very nice, and it also opens up the potential for a push strategy from Central of Fear, and I believe their next pick will help determine which what they're going to go for as far as their strategy. If they go for another high-pushing hero early on, and they're just going to take that Lashrak Diabolic Edict right at the face and just kind of push down some towers. But 
Well, X and D, their anti-push isn't great right now, so might might be something they want to address in this next pick. Ten Centaur Runner, Double Edge is okay. Shadow Poison eventually is all right, but need to get the levels on the Shadow Demon first. Five and Aquas Exhort Invoker really doesn't have a whole lot of anti-push to speak of. Aquas Black's a little bit better, but you don't want to be spending your Tornado on Creeps, time. per se. So we'll see if they get some Wave Clear or not here in this next pick. And then we'll see what Central Fear wants to go for. And X and D, I mean, they have a nice little pick-off lineup here so far. But they can still change their style a lot, depending on these last couple of picks. They got one more support, and we'll have to see if it's another roam to go with the Shadow Demon, or if it's more of a jungling laid back here. Sand King's still in the pool, probably their strongest option here, I think. Um, certainly a fantastic hero uh, to pair with the Shadow Demon. Even more pickoff potential. Get that Blink Initiate as well uh, after the Centaur, and Epicenter's is pretty damn good. But they're going to go for a Slark here. Very Dying interesting pick. pick. Oh man, I'm curious to see how this plays out. Might mean they go for a dual lane thing with a Shadow Demon Centaur, which is really hilarious, and I hope we see that. It's really fun, but not often run that much. But the Slark does like his levels. He likes solo lanes and maybe dual lanes as well, so that potential is certainly there. And another hero that thrives on picking off heroes on the other team with the Pounce, and then just kind of going to work and snowballing out of control. But we see Nature's Profit from Central of here, so... The push is strong once he gets a couple of levels. Once he hits level 6, gets the na the uh, burst damage from Nature's Wrath. And then Treant's on top of that to help push. And the Slark, Dark Pact helps with Wave Clear a little bit. So between that and Double Edge, they might be okay. But their ability to clear creeps from a range is a bit of a problem. And Well, we'll take a look at the bands. X and D, they take out the Templar Assassin. Which I think is a hero that does come online pretty damn early. Uh, you just get like that Blink Dagger and you can already do damage with Melt Strike. So... Pretty smart ban there. That could have really made a big impact in those fights with some physical damage. And then COF bans out the Dazzle. So Dazzle, Shadow Demon, very good combination, especially along with the Centaur. So smart bans from both teams, I would say. And well, let's see how they decide to wrap it up. XD looking for a support. COF probably looking for their mid hero, unless they do some sort of dual lane mid. Which they could theoretically do with the Marana Bane, but... I reckon they'll just go for some sort of aggressive tri lane and throw the Nature's Prophet in the solo safe lane up against someone. Or it could be a Prophet mid, which I guess Invoker, Quas Exhort wouldn't work out too great, I don't think, but wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Ten we'll see if they want to go for. Remaining. There is a Viper if they just want a hero that can farm a mech up really quickly in that mid lane and then just help push. So CUF could go that way. Probably their best option. We see a Rubik from X and D, so Die nice solid support. Uh, a couple of good spells to seal between the arrow. Nature's Wrath is pretty nice to have. You can even steal Trance or Teleport, which is pretty silly. And they'll go for a Troll Warlord. So once they get his ultimate, their potential to just right-click down some towers with huge attack speed is up there with the best of them. So this is a hero we've seen come in a lot recently. In this like sort of last pick phase, we don't really see him banned out that much. So you can kind of hold off and then pick off pick this guy up in the uh, in the last pick. And he's a decent decent one v one laner. With the Whirling Axes, he's able to win a lot of lanes, even though he's like a quasi-melee hero. But just the Whirling Axes mischance is hilarious. It's a lot of damage as well, and you can actually find some solo kills pretty easily if you get a couple of nice bashes on top of that. So, I really do like this pick. Troll Warlord does make for, make for some exciting games, lots of kills potentially as well in his lanes. And we'll have to see how they decide to run this. I do think the Prophet and the Warlord want to be the solo heroes here, and a Bane, Murano, Lashrak, Tri-Lane, probably going to happen aggressively. We'll see how X and D decides to deal with it. They could potentially throw this Slark Rubik together somewhere and then Shadow Demon Centaur against the tough lane, but hard to say at the moment. We'll see how they decide to lane it. They got a lot of options going for them. So anyway, let's go ahead and choose the teams on the side of Central of Fear on the dire side. We got Daywalker playing Glishrak, Mama K Club on that Bane, Klazinki on the Marana, Noctis on Troll War. Last, last but not least, we've got, oh God, Green Font, RNT on that Nature's Prophet and heading into their own jungle. For XD, we've got Coop on that Slark. We got Tresden on the Centaur Warrunner. Twerkit Baby on the Shadow Demon. Akrama on the Invoker. And last but not least, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 on the Rubik. So I'll have to abbreviate some of these names, make it a bit easier for me. Probably, but well, let's see if something happens here in the jungle. There's actually potential for a clash here. It's probably the only hero not down here, but. COF not interested in starting a fight right now. They'll go ahead and back it up, even though they do have the arrow if they want to. It is already leveled, so if they can find a Nightmare into an arrow, that will be something they would love to find, to but battle. I just don't see them doing it. They're going to try and chase down this Treant and force it away, but, well, Coupe getting a little close to them, but he's got the trees. He'll be just fine, but it looks like it will be this aggressive tri lane from COF, so Let's see how these supports do decide to shake it up. Looks like all the supports are going to be hitting top, potentially, for XD leaving Slark solo safe against this aggressive trialing, potentially. So 
the going for a bit of a dodge. Heroes. We'll see where these heroes actually do end up going. We do see Quas level 1 from Invoker. Not sure if that was a response to maybe a level 1 fight happening and just trying to tank it up, or if he's going to be going Quas Wex this game. And I don't know. Without him, Slark does get damage at some point, but he's not what you really want to go for for a soul damage dealer, potentially, because then you can just kind of deal with him on his own, and it's not a big deal. I would like to see this Invoker go Quas Exhort, but he very well could do that. I don't know. The Quas may have just been a panic level. We'll see what he does. Decide to level at level 2, though. So we have this Trilane Centaur top with the Shadow Demon, and I actually this has a lot of kill potential, especially once Shadow Demon gets level 2, and Centaur gets level 2 with a double edge stomp on top of a Soul Catcher. It is a lot of damage damage potential, so we might see that coming at some point here. We're going to have a Invoker versus Troll ma matchup mid, and I want to say this will favor the Invoker eventually, but Troll should do okay, especially first if it's a Quasi Sword. Oh my god, well... They didn't even need level 2. I missed first blood. What a life. What a life. Yeah, they just had the uh, lift and disruption and then the stomp, and they just went to town on him. And they just profit. Not a particularly tanky hero. And he went for the boots first build, which gives you a lot of movement speed, but doesn't help if you're stunned and doesn't give you any tank ability. So he goes down immediately. And well, Slark, he's not going to find a whole lot here either, but at least he's not dead yet, at the very least. So he's going to chill out down here. No, he can't even approach this wave. It will push in, and then we'll see if they go for a dive on him, maybe, with a nightmare into arrow and then uh, split earth to follow. He is well entrenched under his tower. We'll have to see what they try to go for here. And Bane is coming in on the backside. He wants the Snipemare so bad, but... Gonna be a bit hard for him. And mid lane, it looks like it will be a Quas Wex Invoker. So we do have two levels in Quas for our Invoker. So, well, he'll be going that way. So, we won't have that Sunstrike follow-up, but... Centaur damage on top of a Soul Catcher is a lot as it is. So they don't necessarily need it. Lashrek... Coming behind this tier 1 tower. Gonna maybe cut the creep wave a little bit. We do have a pause from Nature's Prophet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, Nature's Prophet has found a last hit. Slark has not. So, both of these, like, solo heroes against the tri-lanes, they really can't approach either of them. The kill potential in both these lanes is astonishingly high, so... They need to be ridiculously careful if they even try to approach last hits. Like, right now, the Slark, he'd love to be lasting in our tower, I tell you that. But he is just chilling in the woods. Below the tower. Nowhere he can really go until he maybe hits level 6. And then he can maybe dodge some ganks, but... He's got a while to go before that, so Sark isn't here that wants his early items to fight. And if he can't get them, it might be in a bit of a sticky wicket, but eh. We'll see how it pans out. Nature's Prophet also badly wants his Midas, so... Neither of those heroes is getting really what they want out of the situation. And I would say that also in the Radiant offlane, we do have the ability to uh, do pulls from this Rubric or Shadow Demon, so... I would say that the Nature's Prophet will have a harder time finding these levels. He can use the Treants to try and disrupt the pulls and block camps as much as possible, so he does have that going for him, but eventually the pull will probably get off. Nature's Prophet actually pulling himself to try and get some XP here. Finding some last hits as well, so he's making the best out of a bad situation. He might lose this tier 1 tower very quickly if he keeps doing this, though, and pulling the creeps out, but... Well, I mean, you kind of have to get something out of this lane. This is one way to do it. Look at this mid lane, it's the only one that's not a totally imbalanced situation. Invoker at 11 last hits, Troll at 10. They're very close so far, and I feel with the Quaswex Invoker that the Troll will have the advantage here at the end of the day, because you can't really kill him as a Quaswex Invoker, and there is the Whirling Axis to fly through as well, so. And he's going to continue spamming that for the last, for the, uh, sorry, the hit miss chance, so. He is out of mana, he will want this bottle, which I believe is on the Courier, yes, so he will be able to continue spamming this with the Bottle Crow. But Invoker does have Quas, so he'll just regen back up any damage he loses. But we do see an Invis Rune. Maybe he's going to be picked up by Bane. He will grab it, so... Going to maybe look for a First Blood middle lane with this Invis Rune, and... Well, was there a ward that actually saw this for Radiant? No, it does not look like it. And Bane will actually head bottom instead of middle. I think either could have potentially worked, but with the Quas, it's kind of hard to kill that Invoker right now. Oh, bottom lane, though. There's going to be a Pounce. And with the rotation down from the supports of the Radiant, they're not able to kill this Mirana, though. They do find the lift from a massive range, but Fade Bolt flies through... Can actually finish any of these heroes off. Bane is coming in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Diabolical Edict is turned on. But can actually find anything. Rubik taking a fair bit of damage here. Brain Sap, right clicks to follow. He will go down. So at the end of the day, Marana is able to leap away, and Bane finds a kill on the Rubik in return. And Marana, she's got a couple of tangos, so she can heal just right back up. Sorry. Hanging around the periphery, buying a couple of TPs. Thought he might have died there or something, but. Well, he does have magic wand, so he can maybe hang around a bit better. Oh, there is a nightmare, but it's toggled away. Will they actually try to arrow anybody? No, they will not. Okay. Actually, Marana does not have mana for the arrow, so never mind. Not quite able to get that combination off. And this leaves Centaur alone against the Nature's Prophet. He should do just fine up here. No levels in return, but he's a really tanky son of a bitch, so he'll find his levels, he'll find his farm. But this means the Nature's Prophet has a bit more room to work with than he did previously, so 
his quest for the Midas is back on track. And this does give Slark a little bit more room to farm. He actually has some backup now. So he actually might get the items he wants. He has bought two clarities. I don't know what's up with that. Slark is just kind of buying stuff accidentally, I think. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe he just feels he needs the mana. It's uh, kind of a weird thing, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. In any case, mid lane, still decently even. Troll up to 22 and 15 now, and yeah. Once he started getting levels in the axes, he's up to level 3 in the rolling axes now. The damage is pretty pretty significant, but there's a cold snap onto the troll. He can take a fair bit of damage there. And he forced to back off and troll. Throwing the axes, but not able to find anything. Gonna try and push the lane in a little bit here and maybe go for that next rune. And just get his bottle up, so. He'll go ahead and heal back up. He has a haste rune as well, so we'll see if he tries to make something out of this, but. Nope, just gonna hang around near mid, it looks like, so. Yeah, not really the best ganking here. The haste is probably the best he could hope for, and then try to get some bashes, but not going to go for it. And, well, you see the Rubik gone top? I would rather see the Shadow Demon up here, honestly, but I guess defensively the Shadow Demon's a bit better to try and help keep the Slark alive, but Slark's just sitting back claritying up, man. He's really not finding a whole lot down here. Comparing his level 4.5 to Nature's Prophet, he's almost level 6 now. With this rotation, his Prophet's definitely getting more out of this than Slark is. One support, just not enough to keep him alive. He still can't approach this lane. Whereas up top, I mean, Rubik Centaur is good, don't get me wrong, but it's just not quite as dangerous. And his Prophet also Radiant utilizing the jungle pretty effectively as well, so he's finding his levels here regardless. Bottom lane. Diabolic Edict is turned on, but really just kind of going on a creeps, so not a whole lot happening there. Typically some items. Troll. Alright, so he's got the bottle, got his boots, and a poor man's shield. We'll see what he goes for next. About 500 gold now. And Evoker's gone for the phase that you kind of have to go for as this, uh, Mid lane, Quaswex, and Voker. These, okay, oh, bottom lane. There's a attack battle chance being used, but tower being shot at. Marana arrow will miss. Edict trying to knock down this tower, but does not look like they'll quite be able to get it. But a couple more pushes in might get something done, but here comes an invis runed up. Troll Warlord. And let's see if they can find anything behind this tower. Marana does have phase boots as well now, so just a little bit of extra damage to contribute. Let's see if Noctis wants to go for this Slark. There's just no supports down here as well. They're just going to take this tower. Dyer's I think XT just kind of has to concede attack. this. They just don't have a great way to stop this. Oh, top lane. Oh, Shadow Demon went back top. Attack. And Soulcatcher on top of that lift. They were just able to clean up that tower. Sorry, Radiant's clean up that kill really easily. But bottom tier fallen. one does go down. Which will start opening up the jungle a bit for CUF to kind of just invade into and have control over. If they can get that tier one mid tower next, that'd be really nice for them with that Lashrak. Oh, we have a DC from the troll. So immediate DC. Sorry, immediate pause. And while top lane, I mean, XD is finding the kills there, but not as many as they would like with this combination. Only two kills so far. And, well, at the end of the day, I mean, it's Prophet. I mean, he did get his level 6, yeah, so he's delaying his minus a little bit. He's actually going for the phase boots first, which will help him dodge some of these ganks with the move speed. But eventually he will want that minus to catch up in levels and farm. But, I mean, the Slark is the real the real sufferer here. I mean, he's been, for he's been forced to buy clarity. He's finishing up a magic wand, but he doesn't have boots yet. He's not even level 6 as a safe lane Slark. And, I mean, you just can't really approach this tri-lane, and I know they were trying to dodge this, but... I guess they couldn't really leave Centaur here alone either. But, yeah, there's really just no good way to fight this tri-lane with what they have, to be perfectly honest. I think maybe fighting it with their own would have been the best option. Having Shadow Demon down here defensively would have been nice, but... It's really quite hard to say if that would have worked out that much better, and then they would have lost a bit more. So I guess losing the Slark's effectiveness as opposed to losing three heroes of effectiveness... Uh, by losing that tri lane is, is not the worst trade in the world for them, but they do find themselves quite a bit behind there. I mean, looking at the XP, it's about 1,000 XP for XD in the lead, and gold lead actually going to COF too. So, well, I actually wouldn't have expected XD to have the had that experience lead, but I guess the top lane started out better for a while, but I bet that'll turn back down at some point here, because this arc's still really getting nothing. Radiant's he will find some creeps to farm here under finally attack. under this tier 2 tower. We're going to pop a dark pack and try to get as many last hits as he can. And, well... He's really not finding any of these. Might even get that one. No, he's been, the tower just doesn't doing a bit too much damage for him to really last hit through, unfortunately. But he will get his level six from this wave, I think. But in the meantime, four heroes mid. They just want to push down these towers and really open up this jungle and deny it to XD on the side of COF. With the Edict flying through a troll, throwing his ultimate. There's a tornado. Only catches one or two though. Will be a nightmare. Arrow to follow up, but immediate disruption from Shadow Demon to try and keep him alive. Slark has TP'd in, and Centaur ult used as well. They will find the kill on the Bane, so nice use of the Centaur ulti. And Slark rotating in and finding a kill and getting himself back in this a little bit. So yeah, nice defense there. The tower does get pretty low, so they can come back and try and take it at some point. But 
I don't know. Defending that tower and getting a kill is pretty damn good for XD. And oh, top lane. Maybe gonna try and get this Rubik here. But Shouty will come up to try and help him out a little bit. So. Not too much happening up there. Tries to make his way back to that top lane. And, well, the supports will make their way back home, it looks like. So. Not the biggest deal. Centaur does have his Blink Tranquils, by the way, at eight and a half minutes. So that's a pretty nice... Pretty nice bit of gold for him. He actually is the last hit leader in this game. He was just kind of the only one chilling in his lane uncontested for the most part. So he's gotten his farm pretty much however he wants it. And oh, top lane. Gonna actually find the Shadow Demon and no real way to defend himself there. And oh, the Treant's pushing. Diablo Edict will get turned on as well. Lots of damage in this tower. This is five heroes top. They're gonna get this tower. Looks like Radiant trying to go for a trade, but with a Quaspex Invoker, they just don't have the, the damage or minus armor to actually do any damage to this tower at all. Tristan is here with the Blink Stomp. Gonna try and finish off Noctis. Double Edge will come through, so that's a very nice kill for them. They do lose the tier one top. They at least find a return kill middle. But now, looks like Dyer's rotating back towards the middle lane. They want this tier one middle tower. Really try and throw all this map control away, and then maybe ward up the jungle or something like that. And then just continue picking these heroes off and not letting them farm. But, I mean, XD, if they find a good fight, if they find a good Tornado EMP, they can... I mean, they can really go to go to work on COF if they actually get the initiation they need with the Blink, uh, Blink Centaur Stomp. They can certainly find something, so... They could fight their way back into this game if uh, COF overextends at all, really. Their push potential is enormous, but I think XD's team fight might be a little bit better right now. And a Sark finally finding some room in this bottom lane. Up to 24 last hits now. Still not doing great. I mean, behind Nature's Prophet. But Nature's Prophet has been farming some jungle creeps, so that number's a bit deceiving. But Sork does find some treads, so... Gotta be pretty happy about that. At the same time, looks like Moran is going for drums. Has the Bracer. So, we'll be done pretty damn soon here. And Invoker... Looks like he's going for drums as well. Has Bracer has the Rogue of the Magi, so just looking to finish the recipe here. Then he'll have it going. And actually, Dyer's going to go for Roche here very quickly. Do any of them have a medallion? No, they do not. They're just going to work with the Treants and uh, the Troll Warlord. But, I mean, they kind of suspect something's up with no one on the map. There is this Dire Observer Ward, so they can see decently well. But the Radiant Observer Ward doesn't really watch Roche too well, so... I don't know. They might have some idea something's happening here, but... Not really 100% sure. Both teams kind of wandering around a bit right now. Rana finding some farm bottom as well, nearing that level 7, so she'll have a max star storm here in just a couple of seconds. So that's a lot of damage, pot damage potential from her between the arrow and the full level star storm. We do see Radiant actually moving towards the Roshan area and maybe up looking for some kills, but not really going to find anything. And top lane, Prophet's just continuing to farm exactly what he wants to do. He's working towards that Midas, getting pretty damn close now, has the Gloves of Haste. And almost 1.4k in the bank. And he does deny this tower as well. The catapult did a fair bit of damage, so... Some gold that XD will not be getting, but they do get a tier 1 safe lane tower. So a little bit of map control earned back their way. Profit Midas almost complete, though. This Bane, actually, with all the tower gold, Bane's got arcane boots. Normally you see Bane's pretty poor at this stage in the game, but... 12 minutes in, and having arcane boots, not too bad, so some sustainability there. Lashrak also has the arcane boots, so these guys can fight... Maybe not constantly, but nearly constantly. Between the Aquila re Aura region and then the two Arcane Boots. They, they're they going to have a lot of mana in these fights. Whereas the sports on the side... Well, actually, Rubik's got his as well, so... I guess with a couple of kills he's been involved in. And let me just double check here. Rubik has two assists, so yeah. A little bit of assist gold helping him get the Arcane Boots for himself. Shadow Demon a much poorer, so... Not feeling too great about that, but at least his buddy has Arcane Boots to help him out. Yeah, Midas is now done on Nature's Prophet, so you can start working towards that next item. Whatever he wants to go for. Typically, we see Necro books on this, but he could also maybe go for a Scythe of Eyes or some Lockdown. But bottom lane, Arrow gonna fly down. Maybe looking for a fight, not quite gonna find it. Sark's actually in the chase. There's gonna be Stampede. Blink Stomp here in a second from Centaur. Will find a track. Pounce does miss, though, but it does not matter. Oh my god, the first potential from this Centaur. Way too much for that squishy, squishy Lashrak. The main problem with Lashrak is he just has absolutely no HP pool and... Decently low armor until he gets one or two items, really. Maybe an EMP Tornado casually middle lane, just... Well, that's been annoying. Troll Warlord actually DC's again, which might be why he was caught in that. I'm not sure there, but second time he's DC'd this game, so... Maybe he has some internet issues. Looking at Centaur, I mean, he's got the cloak in his inventory, so probably going for Hooded Defiance into that pipe of insight, and... I mean, against CUF's team, there's a uh, Marana damage. You've got the Lashrak as well, adding in his magical burst. Brain Sap doesn't really care about anything, but Wrath of Nature 
rolling axes. There's a fair bit of magical damage to deal with here, so Pipe gonna be gonna be pretty decent, especially against Atlas Shrek. He really has nothing that's physical unless until you get that uh until you get some items, but yeah, the pipe should help out quite a bit. And Slark, he's got his treads up and 1k gold, so we'll see if he wants to go for as Troll Warlord DCs again. So he's got some he's got some problems. Hopefully he fixes that up, but we see a lot of Slarks yeah, bleh, oh my words. We see a lot of Slarks going Shadow Blade, and that's what I will probably expect here. It'll give him a little bit of extra pickoff potential and maybe find some of these squishy heroes like Nature's Prophet, pretty squishy. The Shrek, especially squishy, and then Bane, tanky for support, but if a Slark gets an item or two, that Bane will go down as well, so. We'll see if that Shadow Blade is the choice. It looks like our Invoker will be going for, I would reckon, since his drum certainly is a Robe of the Magi, a Orc and Beloved, so a little bit of extra damage, and then some additional control in the fights. Maybe try to silence down that uh, Bane so there's no Fiend's Grip, or you can silence the Shrek, because that's pretty much all he has his spells. We'll see what he decides to use the Orchid for, but that does appear to be what he's aiming for in this game. And yeah, I mean, this Sark has to do a lot of physical damage, so... Shadow Blade, I don't know, it's still good on him, but if he's the one position carry as hard as, as, hard as he is in this game, he may have to go for something different. Troll's back, Marana says they're good to go, so we should see this happening any moment now. Speaking of Marana, she's got her drums finished. We'll be looking towards her next item, normally a Maelstrom. We see some people go Lincolns as well, which against... Blink Stomp isn't great, but against Lift and Disruption is pretty damn good. And the Orchid as well. So Lincolns might be something she wants eventually, but probably going to go for some damage first. Or maybe a BKB. Possibly. But I would expect that Maelstrom pretty soon from her. And well, we're back into it. So well, we'll see what happens. And I mean, XD can't really afford to sit around here. I want to give the late game advantage to COF just because they have... A Marana and a Troll Warlord as well, and then Nature's Prophet. Yeah, their late game's definitely better, so... The onus is on XD to find their core items and then just start taking some fights. I mean, take a look at the graphs, I guess. The XD does have the XP lead, and not quite the gold lead, though, so... Now might be the time to try and make some fights happen. Unfortunately, they did lose all those towers. Uh, the tier 1 top and tier 1 bottom. And tier 1 mid could fall sometime soonish. So, map control that they need for pickoffs, not quite there, and also, on top of that... You also, you're giving up a little bit of gold lead to COF when you give up towers like that. So catapult makes his way mid lane, but Shrek doesn't care. He pushes back and he's going for points and lightning, not maxing out edict. And ever since the patch with the where the lightning adds on that bit of slow, people have been trying to max this lightning out first for the. Uh, it's a little bit of extra damage too. Since that, I think it was two patches ago, they added the extra damage. They reworked the lightning a little bit. So we're seeing some Shrek try out that build as opposed to the max edict, which you used to always see. Well, Centaur heading top with this Blink Dagger. He smoked up. Oh, Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet. Blink Stomp. He's going to be juked a couple of times, but now Moonlight Shadow. Do they have sentries? Yes, they do. They do have sentries. So Nature's Prophet will go down. Not able to quite TP out. Almost nailed it. Actually, the Tornado will catch two. EMP going to fly through as well. Will land on Daywalker. Lashrak gets finished off by that Fade Bolt. So nice Tornado EMP follow-up. And that's what I'm talking about. Those are the kills they need to find in mid lane. Some Sark Illusions bothering a Marana, and well, Sark just chilling at mid lane trying to find some farm and XP. And looks like he's going for a Yasha, so a bit more of a damage build here, so it kind of makes sense with what I said. I mean, he needs to be the physical damage. So Shadow Blade, still decent, but going to go for the Yasha first for some pure da for some guaranteed damage. We do have a Fiend's Grip ready if they want to try and use it. They will. Where's the follow-up? He just Dark Packs it off. There's no coordination there, but ay ay ay. Centaur also misses his Stomp as well after the Blink. So I guess no harm, no foul, but that's Fiend's Grip down for a while, so they can maybe try and push this tier 1 middle with that ultimate down. There's a Nightmare on someone, somewhere. I didn't really see where it happened, but... Alright, I guess that happened. Don't know where it was. It's okay. It's alright. Anyway, this Invoker, working towards that Orchid, has his first Oblivion Staff, so... A little less than halfway there for him. A little bit of damage that they do very sorely need to finish off some of these kills after the Magical Burst. And yeah, we'll have to see how that pans out. Troll Warlord, he's gotten drums as well. Doesn't Marana also have drums? Huh, well, don't know how I feel about that, but I mean, I guess it's a good item regardless, but I don't think you need two on the same team, per se. Yeah, it's good stats, so it'll help them fight now, and I guess they just want to go ahead and play with some pretty defensive items and make sure that they get through this part of the game, because the late game is pretty handily theirs with the way that the Invoker is building so far, and the Slark being not the most traditional late game carry 
in the world. So playing a safe, probably not the worst thing for COF. And they do have the Midas Prophet just farming away as well. So something they could fall back on. And he's actually going to be the mech builder of this team. So you don't see this as often anymore. But you used to see a lot of mech builders on Nature's Prophet. But ever since the Necro, Necro Book Revolution, that's pretty much been the item of choice. But he's going to go for the mechanism for his team. So not sure how I feel about that. I would rather see that on the track. Maybe tank him up a little bit. Um, but, I mean, it's still alright. At least I'll get it a, a bit of a swifter pace, I guess. So, I don't know. We'll have to see how that decision pans out. A little less damage from the Nature's Prophet, unfortunately. But I guess with the Troll Warlord and the Mirana, they feel like he can afford to sacrifice some damage here. But we see a smoke gank top. Dyer's Gotta try and catch up the Smoker. Ghostwalk is not invoked. So, Fiend's Grip immediately. We should see a Split Earth follow up here. Lightning Bolt. There's the Split Earth. Diabolic Edict. They do finish it off. Pretty tough kill of all that quas, but they do work their way through his regen and health, and they do take him out. So, nice find there. No Invoker means that's pretty much their team fight control for a little bit gone here. I mean, they do have the Blink Centaur stomp, but EMP Tornado is kind of their bread and butter right now, at least to start the fight off and then Centaur follows it up. We're going to see a Moonlight Shadow. I'm not really sure what they're looking for here. Maybe bottom lane. Going to try and get Slark. But he's just on the side shop, regening all his health. And, well... You see, I think he's going for an S and Y this game. Troll World are disconnecting again, so I'll have to have another pause. And, well, this isn't too tremendously fun, I have to admit, having these constant DCs. I already waited, like, an hour for a game to start earlier with because of the SEA servers, and now we're getting some good pauses here. But at least he's generally back in pretty short order, so shouldn't be too much longer of a wait. And, well, let's go ahead and... Check out some other things. Let's see here. All right, well. Ay, ay, ay. What a life. Pauses, man. This is Dota. This is Dota. Just a reminder, I guess. So this is for the Battle of Central Europe. This is the qualifier round three. So whoever wins this best of three will move on in the main tournament. And they will play up against some nice big teams. The Actually, I'll go through all the invited teams. I listed a couple of them, but we're going to have uh, Sidonellis, Vool Assassins, Goomba, My Insanity, Aggressive Minds, uh, Natum Spess, XPC International, and 6K plus Mousepad are the invited teams. And then we all have eight qualified teams from the qualifier. It was a 64 team qualifier. So when you think about it, I mean, these teams in this game only needed to win two best of ones to make it here. They just need to win this best of three, and then they're moving on in to play with the big boys. So pretty big chance for them to make it on a bit of a bigger stage. The, the main tournament from BOC, especially towards the end, a lot of really cool teams in there that people may not see a ton of, unless they watch a bunch of JDL. But Sidonolis is a really fun team to watch. Definitely Vool Assassins, they've been making making some waves lately. Goomba, My Insanity also, very decent teams. They're probably the favorites, the favorite four to really reach the top four, and then we'll have to see how they perform from there. So yeah, definitely tune in the next couple of days for the main tournament action as well. And well, Troll Warlord is back, so we should have a go here in just a couple of seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Pauses. Best part of Dota. The solo cast pause is one of the worst things in the world. Definitely. Well, asking for the go here is the Slark. And yeah, I reckon it's going to be that S and Y, so. Not the most typical build. It's a pretty good item on him. Just making it a little bit faster is certainly nice. Uh, tankiness is good. And just a little bit of extra agility. And well, looks like team's ready to go again, and we'll jump right back on in. So 7 to 3 kill score in favor of XD. Towers. One tower taken by X. Wow. Blech. One tower taken by XD. Two towers taken by COF. And well. COF, I will say that the Lashrak hasn't really done the push that they would have probably expected him to, but I think with the recent Lashrac builds people have been going for with the not maxing edict it's just harder to take towers as effectively as you would expect so not too surprised they've only grabbed the two this mid tower is pretty low if they want to come back for it sometime soon so it's something to keep in mind Tristan getting pretty damn close to that uh hood of defiance on the centaur war runner so that'll be a nice item for him help him tank through once he initiates and jumps right on in it's just probably just split pushing his way away and maybe a little bit of pressure mid on the mid tower for XD, but not quite going to happen. Profit just split pushing and farming away. He's fine with that. He's got his mech and 850 gold up, so probably going to go for... We'll see if he goes Necrobook on top of this. He could also go for more control if he wants to. We'll have to see what he decides is his best choice, but Roshan maybe going to be the target here for 
COF, but I mean, this Troll Roller does not have his Helm of the Dominator or anything like that, so Soling Roche can be a bit harder for him without that. I mean, he still does have the Fervor damage, but it's not quite enough unless you get that Helm up. And he's got a Ring of Hell, Ring of Region in his stash, so maybe uh, Vlad's, potentially, since he has this uh, Ring of uh, Ring of Basilius, so kind of a utility-ish. Oh, Blink's, Blink's up, actually, I thought that missed, uh, but we're going to see a Tornado EMP. EMP timed pretty much just perfectly, but on the backside, Rubik gets blown up immediately. Piranha will go down into the trade, though, so so far looking okay for XD, but there's a disruption. Looks like it was defensively, yeah, it's working, Baby's not making it out of this one, taking a lot of damage. Slarkower does find the Bane on the back lines. He's coming in, going to use his ultimate. He's dark packed. nice Blink stomp from the Centaur. Going to find two kills, maybe, but he might go down himself. Tristan actually does get right click down by this Troll Warlord in Troll. Going to try and man fight Slark, but Cold Snap flying through. Doing a ton of damage. Oh, can't quite get that man fight off. And ultra kill for the Slark coming in. Absolutely cleaning up. SNY done. 1.3k gold in the bank. Really nice find for him. And well, he's going to probably go ahead and maybe try and kill this tier 1 tower mid. It's decently low. There is a glyph though if they want to try and defend this. And they will pop it. They have a couple heroes that can TP in. Slark really can't afford to stay around. But he's going to try and get a couple more smacks in before leaving. Now he'll back off. And yeah, so a nice little fight there. So Ultra Kill for the Sark. I do believe that XD lost three heroes as well there. So it was a four for three or a five for three. So lots of bloodshed, but Sark picking up a lot of kills is really nice for him. If he can get a nice gold lead and some nice items, he will be able to snowball and do a lot more damage than I would have suspected in the early game with how bad his start was. He needed that very, very badly to catch up here. And it looks like he's working on a BKB potentially here with another Ogre Club in the inventory after finishing S and Y. So that'll make him a little bit more tanky. And well, Dyer wants to go for this Roshan, and XD's really not in position to defend this. Shadow Demon's not even close. We got mid lane, Invoker trying to run his way down bottom, but this Roshan's almost dead. They're gonna grab this Aegis immediately. Will they try and maybe take a fight? Tornado gonna fly through. Only hits on Inch's Prophet though. So not really anything to be found there. Moonlight Shadow was used, but to no real effect. So. No pickoffs though, and well, they use the dire side advantage along with the Roshan to grab. Sorry, the dire side advantage along with the Troll Warlord to grab the Roshan. There we go. I figured it out. And yeah, so nice little find for them. Not really giving anything up. In the meantime, there was a deny of a tower mid lane, so Centaur does deny that. So I guess that's what they lose by going for the Roshan instead, but probably not feeling too bad about that. Invoker does actually manage to grab the tower middle lane. Oh, gonna be a blink stop on a Noctis. Not really enough to take him out. Double Edge finally flies through. Will kill him. And Invoker does pick up that kill. You can see the Orchid on the Marana. Nice two hero sprout. Can actually follow up on this. Split Earth gonna follow through. Stun on the two once again, but Tresden just too tanky. Invoker too tanky as well, and they just can't kill any of these heroes. Slark now gonna come in and try to find some kills. He just was popped on Troll Warlord, and well. Looks like they finally might be able to force this back. They do lose the Aegis. Uh who did actually have the Aegis there? Um Aegis was in a Marana, so they pick her off and they kill the Troll Warlord once as well. They lose the Rubik and the Centaur, but. This kind of ruins their ability to push safely for a while. Arrow? Long range hits on cube. Can actually finish him off, though. There is going to be an Orchid onto the Marana. Nightmare to follow, and oh my god. Well, here comes Slark trying to finish off this Bane, doing a ton of damage with Dark Pact and just Essence Shift. Going to find this kill, but Invoker goes down, and now Slark's stuck in a Sprout with nowhere to go. He will go down. 826 gold from Marana for ending that streak, and now Arrow actually connects on Shadow Demon, so another kill. Rubik on the run as well. He came in to try and help out his team, but they might have understood the slow coming from that Lightning Bolt. Well, Verona may have gone a bit too far here, but she actually gets healed up a little bit, and wow, they just kind of chased into the ends of the earth, finding four kills there. Centaur's back now, but can you actually find a kill? Not able to stomp in time, and well, that looked like a pretty good fight for XD, but they just couldn't back out fast enough, and it kind of ran in one at a time, and ran into COF, and Marana, big winner of that fight, has a Maelstrom, almost done with a Mjolnir now, after that, uh, picking up that kill on the Slark, so he'll have that very soon. Oh, another disconnect from the Troll Warlord, are you kidding me? Ay, ay, ay. So he's got some real problems with his internet, but yeah, Marana picking up a ton of gold in that fight. Very close to Mjolnir, has the Hyperstone in the inventory, just needs the recipe to finish it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, she is looking looking pretty good right now, and once she gets that damage, Sark will have a hard time tanking through this, even if he does go BKB like he appears to be. That just won't stop the physical damage, it might stop the procs, but even so, just the physical damage output we'll be getting there with the Mjolnir, plus the Troll Warlord ba uh, Battle Trance on top of that. Ay, 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 that attack speed from Marana, and just plus the damage output she'll be throwing out will be pretty damn substantial. Actually, now that I think about it, she didn't really need to go Mjolnir. It's still the best item on her, I think. But with the Troll Warlord in the team, they could have gone for something maybe like a Desolator and just some extra minus armor. And since the attack speed comes from the Troll as well, 
you would take some towers down very very fast with that but maybe someone else would go desolator like maybe nature's prophet or uh troll lord himself but troll going for more utility like i said with that vlads which is done now and nature's prophet's actually gone for a shadow blade so not really your typical item top. choice anymore uh it's kind of weird to see a nature's prophet not go necro book i can't know i keep saying that but it just seems sort of the ordinary to me it really improves the split pushing quite a bit and shadow blade just kind of helps you get out of jams as opposed to other things. And, well, you already have a Murana on your team, so the opponents are going to be carrying detection. I don't really understand the Shadow Blade pickup now that I think about it. So, well, we'll see if it works out for him. But there will be a lot of dust in the other team. Rubik has dust. Uh, let's see. There is sentries on the Shadow Demon as well. Dust on Centaur. Like, this Shadow Blade's not going to help you get out of anything at all on the Snitch's Prophet. So, at least you can maybe go Hex after this, potentially, and maybe get that Shadow Blade Hex off, which is pretty nice. But that's about all he's going to have going for him. So we'll see if that Shadow Blade works out in the end. I would have rather seen a Necro Book or maybe a control item like that Scythe. Well, top lane. A lot of heroes kind of congregating up here. We'll they actually go for anything. We do have a this, uh, Ghost Walked Up Invoker. Look at this thing here. There's going to be a Blink Stomp onto the uh, an Inch's Prophet. He's going to be a Double Inch as well. Damage flying out. Cold Step. But can they actually finish off this kill? Yes, they can. Who am I kidding? Centaur actually gets hit with the negative Urn Charge. We'll see if he dies to that. I don't think he will. Tornado actually going to miss the Lestrack, but will hit the Bane. But here comes the Sark. He's looking for a kill. The lift back actually, maybe a bit not beneficial, but Sark finds two more kills, irregardless. And well, his BKB's pretty much done at this point. And he had that DD rune as well, so that was a really good time for fight for them. They're gonna try and get this tier two tower top with this DD. I think they can do it. There is not a glyph up for about 30 seconds here on COF. So this tier two tower very likely to go down if they keep pushing and pushing it, and looks like they will with that DD. I'm uh, just about to run out, but even so, they got a catapult as well. They should be able to finish this off. We see an invoker with the Gloves of Haste, which, let me think. I mean, I guess he could be going for a Maelstrom here. I mean, only going for more damage himself, because he needs... I don't know, he needs to add some right-click here eventually. So I think it will be that Mjolnir, and that would be pretty good for him. We'll see if that is what he decides to go for here pretty shortly. His attack speed will actually be pretty damn nice if he does actually go for that Mjolnir on top of the Orc and Malevolence as well. Lots of attack speed from this Invoker. If he can find the damage, the Cold Snaps will be ridiculous. And the physical damage output will be there even though he's not gone Exhort or Necrobug. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Well, Troll Warlord, he looks like he's on the way to he looks like he's on the way to a BKB or maybe an S and Y with his Ogre Club. I would reckon BKB. And Marana, she's got that finished Mjolnir now, like I was pointing out earlier, so her damage is getting a bit ridiculous. Oh, Invoker just they find it just profit, and that Shadow Blade, once again, just not going to help you. Would have been better to have a Necro Book and maybe tank up a bit, but nope, going to go for the Shadow Blade, and it's just not working out for him. And he's died a couple times, he would have probably preferred not to. Not sure if it would have helped him to have a different item, but maybe the Shadow Blade gives him a false sense of security, and he finds himself getting picked off more times than not. And, well, looking at supports, we do have an urn up on Shadow Demon, so nice little item for him. And he's gone for the max Shadow Poison build after maxing Disruption as well. So, he's got a little bit of damage potential if he lands all five of those Shadow Poison stacks. That is a shit ton of damage. And while Slark has to finish BKB now, he's hard enough to kill as it is. Invoker, Ghost Walk, Top. But gonna go ahead and back off. Slark finds the Tier 1 Tower bottom by himself, I think. Rubik was there as well, but not really helping out that much. So, nice little find for him. And it will be a Maelstrom so far for... This Invoker, I reckon he will go ahead and finish that Mjolnir as well on top of that, so. He's starting to get a pretty significant damage. And he's also fully leveled out his Quas and his Wex, so. We're going to start seeing that Exhort get leveled here pretty damn soon, along with the Invoke. So, some more cool combos coming from him, as well as that damage burst from the Exhort levels. Very shortly on the Invoker, so. it's It's been pointed out, I know my, my good buddy Roxas would always say that Invoker probably has the best, the best like, potential growth from level 16 on, like when you are just leveling up all the way to 25, just because you get way more access to better spells as you level up, whatever your whatever your last orb is, pretty much. You get so much, so much more versatility on top of what you already have as a pretty decent hero, even with only a focus in two orbs, so. Yeah, he's in that phase where he starts to just get better and better with the levels. And well, look at the centaur. He does have his hood done. Probably working towards the pipe. We'll see if he does opt to complete that. And I reckon that's what he'll want. Not 100% confident, but... We'll see what he buys next. Slark, he had that BKB finish, like I said, and looks like he's going for a basher next, which 
Makes complete sense. He'll already have a plenty of attack speed from the treads, S and Y, so he can feel free to go for this basher and then probably go ahead and finish the super basher as well after that for some more guaranteed damage and some more lockdown for maybe the troll warlord uh, through the BKB or whoever grabs BKBs. You just kind of give him the old abyssal blade at the face and then smack him around a bit, so probably going to be the item of choice here for our Slark. And, well, Verana looks like she's going for a BKB after this Mjolnir, which is a pretty typical item progression for her. No surprise there at all. And, well, I guess a little bit of a lonely action. We'll take a quick look at the graphs. And, unsurprisingly, XD is still ahead in the experience, 5,000. There was a pretty big dip after some of those fights, but after that roller coaster, they find themselves back in the lead there. And the gold lead, they have basically just taken over in the last couple of minutes, just controlling the map a bit better and farming more effectively, finding more towers, and there's been a 4k gold swing. It's still very, very close. No outrageous gold lead either side. The XP lead is certainly nice for XD, but not necessarily game winning, and I still think the late game goes to COF as long as they don't lose some racks here decently soon, or get into a huge item disadvantage. It's just so hard to fight the damage output of a troll team late game with that battle trance. But, I mean, it means I have to kill the Slark, too, to actually win any fights. With that PKB done, and the Basher's done as well on the Courier, I assume, so... He's getting pretty jacked, but Mirage's not that far behind him, either, to be honest. And her damage, getting pretty good as well. Invisible Slark, maybe gonna go try and look for somebody here, but... No, nope, he's gonna go back to just farming. He wants to get this Abyssal Blade pretty quick, I would imagine. And looks like our Troll Warlord about to finish this BKB here as well, so... Both teams pretty content to sit back, passively, far, passively farm up their next couple of items before going to try and take a fight here. Treants fighting Treants in the Roche pit. So I guess Rupert grabbed those. But, well, four Treants not better than one, apparently. Speaking of Rubik, he's got his Arcane Boots. He has a gem as well and a Blink Dagger, so he's got pretty much all he needs to try and make an impact. Don't know, I don't really think this is an Aghanim's game for him. I mean, Aghanim's Prophet ult's alright, but no real big thing to steal with an Aghanim Scepter, so... We'll see what he goes for. Well, there's your Troll Warlord Disconnect right on time. Pretty much like Clockwork, so... He'll be back momentarily, I can only assume. <laughs> there we go, yeah, exactly. My feeling's exactly Rubik. And well... Look at those supports, I guess. Look at the support network. They're all decently poor. The Radiant looking a bit better right now, but pretty equivalent net worth for all these supports. But as far as the levels go, they're all level 11 as well. So the support's actually very, very close so far. And this game, not out of reach for either team. Lashrak looks like he's going for a BKB. He's going for a Bracer as well, and he is their gem carrier too. And he does kind of need this BKB to stay alive and try to throw out, continue throwing out damage. Hasn't leveled his ult quite yet. He'll have to get some sort of mana item or mana regen item. Maybe a Yule Scepter after his BKB to really... Actually have enough mana to use his ultimate effectively. So we'll see if he does go for that. Looks like Ninja's Prophet is going for a Scythe here. I mean, it could technically be a Sky or Lincoln's, but with this ultimate orb, I reckon it'll be that Scythe of Ice for a little bit more control. Oh. We had the old resume and pause. I think we'll be going again here in a second. Yeah. Okay, just a bit of a bit of a double clutch there. No big deal. And well, back to the action. Or farming, as it happens to be right now. Both teams just. They have things they want. Centaur's pretty damn close to a pipe. And this Marana, well, she's trying to finish her BKB up as well. They, both teams are trying to farm up these core items as fast as possible. I think XD could fight more if they wanted to, but they're choosing to play a bit on the back foot. I'd like to see them go maybe try and get these towers, but, well, Roshan's up now, which will probably be the next big key here. And Dire, well, they have lost a couple of towers, but they do still have the Tier 2 and Tier... Yeah, tier 2 bottom and mid remaining still, so they have some TP support if they do need to buy back for a Roche fight. So I would say Dyer has a bit of an advantage here. They're going to go ahead and try and run on in here. As far as the vision goes, well, the Tornado will catch some people out, so they know it's happening. But how will they react is the question here. Radiant is moving in. The Tornado is down for a good couple of seconds now. It's actually down for 19, but Deafening Blast coming in. Slark actually just comes in. He's just really brave right now. This is BKB. He's not scared of anything. Going to just try and go ahead and finish off some of these heroes. Bane actually not quite killed off. Really wants to kill off this Bane, but the Sprout will actually catch him out. Can they actually finish that Bane off? It doesn't seem like it's going to happen, and they've kind of sold out on him. Not going to find him. Slark getting Fiend script. He has no out of this. That's going to be a kill. He goes down. The Shrek finding a couple of kills there. They also killed the Rubik, and... Well, Bane does... Actually, no. Bane finds the kill on Shadow Demon, so... Well, a bit of a botch initiation. They just couldn't choose a hero to focus on. Centaur does find the Troll Warlord in the backlines, but at the end of the day, 3 for 1, the Slark goes down. And they could probably still go for Roshan here with this Diabolic Edict, so... Really nice win there for CUF, and just not a very... 
I don't know, not a very coordinated team fight from XD. I the sword does feel unkillable, but he uses BKB. Didn't really find any kills during it. He kind of changed priorities a lot, and then the sprout kind of caught him off guard when there was when the pounce was used. And he had no way to get out of the sprout, and they couldn't finish the bane off of all heroes. So Oh, just a very sloppy fight, and well, see off in a really nice spot after that. They grab three kills in the Roche, so take a look at the graphs. Well, we'll look once they actually update that fight here in a second. Shadow Demon does have a four staff, which is a nice item for him, but oh, that's the fight XD very badly wanted to win, and they need to, like I said, they need to try and get into an advantage here before this late game kicks in for COF. Now there's a PKB on Marana, so she'll be hard to kill. She has an Aegis as well on top of that. She's just farming away, man. So let's see, the grass probably will have updated now. Yeah, that gold swing almost back down to even XP, taking a huge dip as well. So that's the exact sort of fight COF is looking for. They can continue to try and press the issue with the Aegis if they want to, or just use it to sit back and farm comfortably. And they can just try and fall back onto their late game. Marana could use another item here on top of this BKB. Maybe sell that Aquila and pick up, I don't know, pretty much. A Lincoln's is all right defensively. Doesn't really need to go for it with the BKB maybe, but MKB is a great choice. Slark might eventually go Butterfly. Um... Marana could also go Butterfly, but I don't think that's quite as good. I really like the MKB and just go for full damage output here, so. We'll see if that is what she decides to do there. She could also go Deadless if she wants. Something to think of, but really up to her. I'd like to see the Centaur maybe get a Heaven's Halberd at some point here. Could be the next item he goes for after his pipe. After you get the pipe and, uh... Oh, well, he's actually going for the mech too on the Centaur, so. Pretty mana intensive, so. Hmm. I don't know, Halberd's okay on him, or maybe so hard at Tarask as well. We'll see if he does decide to opt for here. There can be a smoke up from the Dire team. All five of them heading down towards the Radiant Jungle, but the Radiant team's all up near their secret shop. Just kind of waddling around, and, well, they'll run into the creeps, and they'll know they're up there kind of soon. As Dire just kind of moves bottom to find no one, unfortunately for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, the yawn. Okay, well... So cast it for the next game, thank god. Uh, just pardon me a second while I talk to my buddy here. Alright, so that's nice. Uh, Cogcaster is always nice to have, especially if it sells into a bit of a farm war like this. Illusion. There's not a whole lot to talk about. I mean, right now, I just kind of wait until people get items, and then there you go. But Slark, well, he's got that basher up. Not a whole lot of gold right now, but... Towards a casual arrow actually to force a TP cancel from the Invokers now. There's really no way to defend this tier 2 bottom. They'll grab it for free, and that's the thing with the Aegis. It's kind of hard to take a fight against this Aegis right now. We have Centaur. What? Oh, they use an ultimate to try and clean up that illusion to Nature's Prophet, so nice little mind games there, I guess. And, uh, well, Centaur just double edges the creep wave in frustration and backs off, so. Unfortunately for him, I can find a whole lot there. And, well, the longer they can keep this up, the more and more. See off will work their way back. The gold lead, probably going their way now. Yeah, definitely. It's this is, look at this roller coaster of a gold graph right now. XP graph, not quite as emotional, but this is looking like a teenager's emotional roller coaster right now, in the gold graph. And well, if they can keep this item advantage going and knock down these tier two towers, see in a great position for the late game. But on the other side, XD's team fight is ridiculously good if they find their initiation and don't really go balls up with the way they jump into a fight like they did at the Roche pit. They can always win a fight if they get the right lead. But, well... This troll can have another item of his own here quite soon, so he can start building some damage if he wants to, or maybe some more tank ability. But with the BKB, probably going to go for damage himself. And Marana, 2.8k gold in the bank. So, whatever her next damage item is, she's getting pretty damn close to it. Could pick up a Demon Edge here pretty soon if she wants to work towards either a Daedalus or an MKB. I think either would be a fine choice. I haven't looked at the Invoker's items in a while. He just got that Maelstrom and is actually going back for a Scythe of Vise or Lincolns here with the Ultimate Orb. Potentially a Scotty as well, but I reckon it'll be that Scythe. Not 100% confident. Could be either as Lestrac finishes his BKB, but... Well, this Invoker just... I don't know. It's... Without the, without the Exhort, without the Necker books, it just feels like he's not able to dish out enough damage in a fight. He's gone for this Maelstrom just kind of casually, but... I'm, not, I'm just not sure it's enough damage. Like, in the delay game, the right clicks from an Invoker who's built this way, and the Sark just isn't going to be enough, I feel, to deal with the BKBs on CF. I mean, even Lashrak has that BKB now. Bane probably going to get one at some point. It has the Ogre Club working on it right now, so... 
How are they going to deal with this without the physical damage? EMP actually going to catch on two, maybe after the tornado it looks like, and it will. So, nice find there. Missed an arcane boot, so no big deal there. Arrow actually barely missing on the Rubik. Rubik does steal arrow, throws it right back in Murata's face. They can burn the Aegis immediately. That was a really nice steal. Quick thinking from the Rubik. Bring that immediately. There's going to be a Centaur Stampede. Stomp in. They're going to try and kill this Lestrak. Lestrak actually manages to make it out, so the initiation not quite working. Murata BKB is up. Trying to find some kills, but no one really dying as of yet. Invoker trying to find the right clicks. Uh, Sprout up on the Tresden. Arrow gonna fly through as well. Can actually kill off the Centaur. Rubik with the Blink Lift. Blinking right to death pretty much. He'll be the first one to go down for real here other than the Aegis. But here comes the Sark in the backline. So he does get gripped up. No Dark Pact for him to get away here. But uh, Bane just sitting there eating the shots while trying to channel the Fiend's Grip. And now they're gonna give chase on to the Sage's Prophet. They need more detection here. They need to pop a Dust, but it's on cooldown for Centaur. Uh, Sark doesn't have any either. Probably just gonna try and TP out. Is there gonna be stunned? Yes, they do. They find him. He ran back into sentry detection, maybe? Or did they have him dusted still? I'm actually not sure. But anyway, four for one trade and killing the Aegis. So a fantastic fight from XD, and that's just what I meant. If they find the red initiation, they can win any fight in the world, so. I think the Sark was the Sark handled that fight a lot better than he did at the Roshan pit. He found a target, he stuck to them, and he killed them. And I mean, that's basically what you want to do with Sark. Just use your ultimate or whatever time you're invisible to just completely kill one hero take him out and then Dyer's let your team win the 5v4 at attack. the end of the day and the invoker certainly was able to dish out more damage in that fight maelstrom certainly helping and well they can get this tower maybe the next big set of items and they'll be in pretty good shape Dyer's very close attack. game this How's game i mean almost impossible to tell who wins and these guys are playing for a lot right now they really want to qualify for this tournament it's their big shot to really try and make an impact attack. and play against some of the bigger teams in central europe a couple of big items now coming for the Radiant after that fight and the towers they take. They do finish up the Scythe of Ice on the Invoker, so a nice bit of control for him. Some extra health and some more right clicks from the Intelligence he gets from that. And then Slark finishes Abyssal Blade as well, so that lockdown through BKB. They can use that on Marana, use that on Troll. That'll help out quite a bit here so Look going forward. So this next fight, they find a fight with this DD on the Slark. It's going to be terrifying. They really want to find someone, but Dire, they are well entrenched in their own secret shop and... Well, that's probably for the best for them, because this Sark would be way too much to deal with for them right now. Oh, going to go in front of the Ancient Stack as a team is the Dire side. Bane, after dying there, still decently close to BKB, but not... I don't know, it's going to still be a little bit here. Marana, looks like she's going for a Butterfly. Got the Eagle Song in her inventory. So, that'll probably be a Q once the Radiant sees this to... For them to pick up some MKBs, potentially on the Invoker and Slark. We'll see if that is what they decide to opt for. Sark almost certainly should get one. Invoker's not necessarily required, but Sark definitely should get that MKB. Well, actually we see both teams moving in. There's going to be Moonlight Shadow. Sark running right in the middle of them. Fiend's Grip immediately used, and they're just going to try and blow him up, and they will. That's the easiest kill of their lives, and Sark's almost all their physical damage. That's a huge kill for them. Ay, 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 Sark just running right on in there against a team with a Marana on it. Does he have buyback? No, he does not. They may just try to go high ground here. Sark's down for 70 seconds. Yeah, they're going to go for it. They do have a pretty good defensive team uh, for high ground with the Invoker. But, I mean, Mjolnir's up on this troll ward. He's going to start going to town. Tornado just misses completely. Catching some treants, but that's about it. So this, this is a really good time for them to go. Ice Wall, pretty damn annoying to walk up into as well. They're going to start smacking away in this tower. Battle Trance is used. Going to be a sheep up onto Invoker. Not catching. Oh, Stole Arrow can actually hit on the Shrek. He's down for quite a while here. Blink Stomp. Not able to find a kill quite yet. EMP going to fly through. Not doing too tremendously much. And well, here comes the Marana and Troll with the BKBs on, trying to find some kills, not finding them yet, but they can just go back and hit the tower if they want to. Troll's just going to work on these towers. And, I mean, they're just going to take these racks unless Tresden can make a huge play here. Finds a two-hero stop, that's about the play I was talking about. Trying to finish these supports off. Troll trying to man fight some heroes, but not quite working out for him. Gonna be a defensive sleep from Bane. Centaur trying to make it out, gets forced to have to play by the Shadow Demon, I would imagine. And while Troll's now on the run, he might actually go down here and he will. Rax decently low, but it's the melee racks. It will respawn some health, so... They managed to hold here. They lose the tier 3 tower, but killing spree for Invoker. They hold without the Slark, and... Well, that was a fight they had to have, and... Very nicely defended by XD. COF maybe... Diving a bit too hard and going for kills with their BKBs on, as opposed to just trying to finish off the racks when they had their BKBs up and guaranteed damage, so... I don't know. Maybe a little bit of a misplay from that, but... You have to give, you have to give props to XD for handling that fight almost perfectly. Dresden, nailing those stomps, and that was a Shiva's Guard up, which will help them in the fights immensely as well. Just really, really nicely well played by the Centaur in that fight, I would imagine. Nice use of Stampede, good stomps with the blinks. And basically keeping his team from losing that Rax. And well, 
So you have forced to back off. Marana getting pretty damn close to that Eagle Song. Firing an arrow into the Roche pit. We'll scout it out. So Roche is back up. Dyer probably in a better position to get this, but Radiant is heading that way. Vilker is Ghost Walk. He's going to speed right on in there with this max uh, Maximum Wex. And while they try to go for this, I mean, Dyer is not really in position right now. I'm going to go ahead and Alacrity the Invoker and try to go to town on this Roche. They do pretty decent damage, but they need to not get caught out here. But I guess Ancient Prophet's kind of out of position, but he has his TP, obviously. Here's the Radiant Dyer moving in. Three here, Split Earth will be thrown in the pit. It kind of really can't stick around, but they're going to try and finish this off. This is really, really brave from them to try and do this. EMP thrown casually at the backside, trying to just discourage this. They're trying to finish this roast. They really need to finish this before taking a fight. And it's going to go down. Invoker grabs it. Now the fight can begin. Invoker, sorry, uh, Troll pops his BKB. Trying to go to town here, but he gets a pistol plate by Sark. He's going he's gonna to get uh, smacked around quite a bit. Marana, oh my god, Troll DC. They need to pause right now. They cannot win this fight without a Troll. This is, oh my goodness. They have to just back out now. Oh, what a, what a real, that's a real shame there. I don't know if they win that fight anyway, but now it's a two... 2 nil trade. More here's going to go down, and that was the worst time for a DC. Ay, ay, ay. Marana. Back to full health. Do you have a attack. cheese or something? She wants to grab the cheese. I guess that was the third Roshan, but... She's at full health. Not going to save her from this, though, and she will go down and... That's just a damn shame that the troll world have been down. They really should pause the game. He's still DC'd, but he's alive. But no one's even realizing yet. Or something. I don't know. I don't know where the pause is. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep playing on, I guess. Uh, anyway, I guess at the end of the day, big fight win for XD. They grabbed the Roshan. I don't think they even used the Aegis. Uh, I think... Actually, who picked it up? Um, I think Invoker picked it up. He must have He must have, must have. have died there, but... Well, Marana's saying go on, so we're just going to keep playing this with the troll, troll Warlord at the sideline. So, this is only game one. We'll have to see if they do decide to go for a stand-in. Or someone else in this game number two. Troll is reconnected now, but I mean, with how consistently he's been disconnecting, like that was a crucial time. I mean, I think they're going to lose that fight regardless with the Aegis on the side of the Invoker, but even so, I mean, you're, you definitely don't stand a chance when one of your cores DCs like that. So yeah, taking a look at the graphs, the gold, well, still in CO's favor, but the roller coaster heading back up towards XD a little bit after that fight. XP lead way in their favor. But that's starting to mean a little bit less and less later on. As far as this goes. And, well, Nature's Prophet. I haven't looked at him in a while. He's going to go for a Mjolnir as well. He's got the Maelstrom done and the Assault Caress in his pocket. He's actually finished the Mjolnir. He has the recipe on the Courier too, so. More damage output. More damage output for them. More push. So that should be good for them. We'll help in the fights to have a little bit more damage as well to try and bring down that Slark. But that Slark, man, he's getting pretty damn tanky. He can maybe go for a Scotty now if he wants. Just get massive tank up. He has a lot of damage already. But... Actually, oh yeah, MKB is probably going to be his first choice here. I would imagine. But he could also just go Scotty and tank up and just try to fight through the evasion that uh, the Moran is bringing to the table. We'll see, though. Troll has got MKB himself. So just more damage and dealing with the potential of the Butterfly from Slark. So... Not too bad there, and just, you just it's just a high damage item. Just a ton of DPS, so. A perfectly solid choice from him. And, well, maybe a bit of a push here in the bottom lane. There's no Aegis, I believe. Yep, it was on the Invoker, I'm pretty sure. Not 100% confident, but there's a go and try and smack away this tower. Glyph is used, but they're not really in position to defend this. I, this is kind of a wasted Glyph. I just don't see them doing anything. Forward Spirit's now finally on the field with the Exhort levels. So that'll help with the push quite a bit, that minus armor. But, oh, well, here comes the Moonlight Shadow. Arrow actually might land, might land on Slark, but nice defensive disruption will protect him for the time being. Still stunned when he comes out of it, but not for long. He's able to pop his BKB and start fighting. There he goes. Oh my god, so much action. So many BKBs right now. But the Bash onto the Bane will take him down. He's the first to fall. Actually, the Rubik died as well. But, well, oh my god, what a stomp and what a double edge from our Centaur player going to town. And that was probably going to win them the fight. He caught, caught out the two cores there as well. Now Slark's going to town. Big fight win. Five for one for XD and well. I thought they couldn't really make it at this point in the game with their damage, but I mean, the Sark, he got out of control. His network's really good. The Invoker also adding more damage with his item build than I would have expected. And, well, that's going to be a set of racks, if not two. The Glyph is down. They probably shouldn't have burned it on that tier three and waited for the tier three defense. But instead, their decision leads to racks being uh, knocked down. And, well, they could lose all three, honestly. Nature's Prophet's not back for 55. Troll Warlord, not for 40. No buyback status. No one on Dire could buy back. I mean, this is three sets of racks. 
This is game. I think. If they want to do it, I'm pretty sure they will. Yep, uh, not a whole lot more to say. Disruption can be used on Sark to try and get some more damage. And yeah, there it goes. That's going to be Mega Creeps in one fell swoop, so... No GG yet. Okay, there it is. All right, so game one will go to XD in this best of three, but it is it is just that, a best of three, so... Well, they have the advantage for now. We'll swap sides, swap first pick, head into game number two, and well, we'll see if uh, CUF can make up this game number two, or if it's going to be a two-game sweep for XD. I will be back with a co-caster. My buddy Roxas will be joining me for this game number two, so... Don't go anywhere. We'll go to a quick break with some music, and then uh, we'll be right back after that, boys and girls. So stay tuned. <laughs> 